what's going on guys and welcome back to another video uh, in this video I'll be covering the global illumination for Cinema 4D I'll show you some basics of how to use it um, show you a scenario with using lights uh, instead of for example HDRI image and so on and uh, if you, I'll show you also a few different options you have uh, for your bounces uh, so global illumination is pretty much bouncing of light in your scene uh, so as you can see right now I have this backdrop I have a little sphere in the middle and I have this camera so if I go to my side view, uh, let me just go to the right view here, and add a light like we normally do. And let me just move this light above our uh, sphere here. And let me just go back to my doodle, doodle tool. So as you can see, guys, without the global illumination, uh, the light, the rays from the light will hit your object once. And then uh, the power of the light is lost. Uh, but if you turn on your global illumination in your render settings, uh, the bounces of light will happen, like it happens in the real world, you know, the sun comes in through the window and then it hits your floor, then it hits your um, wall, then it hits your bed and so on. So it keeps bouncing around the room and it lights up your room uh, when the sun is just uh, really high, you know, like in the morning uh, around like, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock or so on. Uh, so in a 3D um, application like Cinema 4D, if you don't turn on your global illumination, uh, the light will, you know, start shining to your object and then hit the floor and then lose its power but if you do turn on your global illumination it's going to start bouncing so for example it's going to go to your floor and then from the floor it's going to go to the back wall and then from the back wall it will go back uh, onto the sky and so on and if you have a ceiling it would, it would uh, bounce off the ceiling back to the object and so on or if you had some kind of uh, um, something like above uh, the, the sphere here, like another object, it would pretty much hit the, hit the sphere, hit that object and bounce it back to the sphere and so on. So with global illumination, the light keeps bouncing. It doesn't just die, it die off as soon as it hits the, uh, uh, the floor. So let me just show you an example of, uh, of this scene without the global illumination. Let me just give it a render here. Uh, I think I have it turned on, hold on. So let me just show you an example uh, without global illumination. So as you can see guys, this is uh, pretty much default light. I don't have any lights in the scene except this one. So this is without the global illumination. And uh, we'll just do another one with no lights at all. Okay, that's better. And now let's turn on our global illumination. So the way you do that is if I delete this, so I switch uh, my renderer to physical, and if you go to your effects and click global illumination, it will add global illumination to your scene. So if you keep everything the same uh, or default and uh, give it a render, uh, let's just see a difference. So as you can see, nothing happened. is because we don't have any lights in the scene at all. Uh, so the first scene here, the reason we got this result is uh, because uh, we had a light in our scene. And uh, even though I deleted the light, we still have a default light in our scene. That's why uh, I get this result. Uh, but now, uh, let me just, for example, throw in the same light that we had before. And let me just move it up like we had. And let's just run global illumination. I'll run this render, render with global illumination and we'll see what happens. So as you can see, th this is the scene uh, without the global illumination, as you can see, we're getting this darkness under our object. And this is the uh, uh, example with global illumination. Uh, the, whole, uh, the whole floor uh, is getting filled up with light, so it's not as dark as before. So this is the comparison. This one is a little flat, and uh, this one is not. So that's pretty much uh, what global illumination does. Uh, so let me first show you a scenario with the, uh, how most people uh, do it if you're lazy. You can just uh, throw in, you know, HDR image on your sky material, and uh, turn on global illumination, and it's gonna it's gonna look pretty much uh, the scene is gonna look finished because it's gonna be the light is gonna be coming from all around the image or uh, your model. So let me just create a sky uh, real quick, and I already have a material uh, in my luminous channel. I just dropped in the HDR image, so I'm just gonna take this HDR image and um, apply it to the sky object as you can see we're getting the uh, image all, all around our um, scene here so if I zoom back in 
And first, let me turn off globalization and show you that nothing will happen. This is the result of the default light, and we're getting the uh, reflections. But now let me turn on global illumination and uh, run it again, and we'll see what kind of result we get. So as you can see, guys, uh, with default settings, uh, obviously this is not enough uh, with this sky object. So what we have to do is uh, play around with the settings a little bit. Uh, so when it comes to settings, you have a primary method and secondary method. That's just uh, what kind of uh, methods you want to use for bouncing the light. Uh, so for the first one, you have QMC and the cache. Uh, QMC is uh, kind of slow, but it's really accurate and it gives you uh, really clean results. If you use cache, uh, for some scenes it does work. If your scene is more like sim uh, simplistic, you can get away with cache. Uh, but if it's like an interior scene with a lot of objects, you probably want to use QMC. Even though it's going to take longer, uh, the results are going to be uh, much better. And for the secondary method, you have QMC again, you have the cache, uh, then you have uh, radiancy maps, and then lighting map. Uh, so you can you can do QMC again. It will be overkill to do for primary and secondary. Uh, so we'll, usually what you would do is uh, you do QMC for the first one and uh, cache for the second one. And that should, should give you a nice and clean result. If you have a more simplistic scene, you can do cache for the first one and lightning map uh, for the second one. Uh, so let's just try uh, cache and lightning map for this one and see what happens. So as you can see guys, the things got a little bit brighter, uh, but overall scene is still a little bit dark, as you can see. So what we have to do, we have to uh, boost up the settings a little bit. So if you go back to our window setting for the global illumination, we have the maximum depth here, we have gamma and so on. Uh, so let's just try, we can try, we see 32, let's try 48 for maximum depth. Let's try two for gamma and uh, inside the lightning map, let's try uh, maybe like 8,000 bounces or path count. And uh, let's give it another render and see what kind of result we're gonna get. So as you can see guys, the, the overall scene got a lot brighter and it still looks good. But if we zoom in, we are getting a lot of splotchiness. And uh, the reason for that is that HGRI is not producing enough light. Uh, so GL or Global Illumination is trying to uh, compensate for that. Uh, so what you can do is actually boost up uh, the brightness of uh, your HGRI. So if you go under Illumination, uh, you can uh, change the Generate GI or Generate GL. And uh, let's change it to 250% here. And uh, let's see, let's see the difference now after you render. So as you can see guys, now now it's finally um, way brighter than before, uh, but it's, it's really washed out. Uh, so you have to play around with the settings and uh, see what kind of uh, result do you want. Uh, in this case, it's probably because the HDR image I'm using is really uh, low resolution, so we're not getting a nice uh, result. Uh, but let me see. I'm going to switch uh, my uh, primary to QMC and I'm going to switch to cache for the secondary and I'm going to increase the uh, diffuse depth to about 6 and I'll bring back gamma to 1 or maybe 1.1 and let's see if you can get a better result that way. And this will take much longer because QMC like I said is more accurate. So let's see what happens here. Alright guys, so the, the render just finished. And it took 1 minute 33 seconds with QMC. Uh, so in comparison with the uh, cache, we have 15 second render, and now we have 1 minute 33 seconds. And as you can see, uh, this was really splotchy and washed out. And QMC, we got some shadows back. And uh, it's still washed out, but that's because I cranked up the intensity of the HDRI image because I have it as low resolution. Uh, but anyway, global illumination, uh, like I said, you have Basically, if you don't want to mess around with these options, you have your presets here. So you can do interior, you can do exterior, you can do object uh, visualization. Uh, so if you don't want to mess around with these settings, you can you just you know click on one of the presets and it should do your, the job just fine. Uh, but if you don't want to mess around, uh, if you do QMC and uh, cache, uh, diffuse depth pretty much uh, increases the, uh, the, the path count or the bounces and it makes your overall uh, scene brighter. Uh, gamma, obviously, if you crank this up, it will uh, increase the brightness of the scene too, but just w watch out because it's gonna wash out your scene. 
and then inside uh, uh, the cache options you have uh, the core density and so on so you can um, you know crank up the settings here too but I'll just stick to medium and then if you choose uh, to do cache as your primary and lightning map for your secondary uh, it's the same thing so you have the maximum depth uh, pretty much increases the uh, the bounces and makes your overall scene brighter and same thing for the gamma and uh, the only difference is if you do a uh, lightning map if you go inside the light map here uh, you have uh, path count and sample size so if you increase these two it will uh, throw more rays in your scene and pretty much make it brighter and uh, that's about it and uh, let me see what else here you have load and you have visualize yeah everything else you can keep uh, pretty much the same and also you have these little uh, arrows here uh, next to the primary and secondary uh, so if you don't want to crank up um, your maximum depth or gamma you can always click the little arrow you have intensity here and saturation and same thing here so you can always uh, optimize and uh, increase your intensity here and here and so on or like I showed you before you can go back into your material uh, go to the illumination if you're using the uh, HGRI image and uh, you can crank up the uh, GI, GL uh, generate to whatever percentage you want to get a right result and make sure you get you know a nice resolution HDRI image I'm using like a probably like a 2k image so I'm getting really washed out results uh, but if you get like at least a 4k 8k image uh, the results you're gonna get is really nice what most people do is um, uh, they uh, create a material they drop the uh, HDRI image under the luminous channel and then they go inside the render settings they uh, activate global illumination uh, choose one of the presets and you're pretty much good to go all the lighting for you is done uh, but if you don't want to be lazy uh, the alternative is creating your own lighting which is in most cases better you have more control and uh, and I don't know for me just uh, I like lighting my own scenes and uh, it gives like a challenge and you can play around with lights intensity and so on but let me just uh, create a basic setup here with four lights so let me just put one to the side here just like this and uh, let me increase the overall size and also tilted actually let me put one on this side first turn this one around click these two and uh, let me just switch the fall off to uh, inverse square accurate and let's just make this a little bit bigger I mean smaller maybe like this and then uh, let's uh, turn on our shadows for each light and also let's change the tint to this one like green and for this one we'll do like an orange and let's do one more light uh, more like a frontal light so let me just turn this one around pull it back like this make it bigger and uh, for this one we'll do like a light blue light and let's make sure it's it's going like right directly at the object or the sphere in this case maybe like this so let's ju jump back to our camera go back to global illumination and uh, this is going to be overkill these settings so I'm just going to reset it to default so we'll do cache for the first for the primary and we'll do uh, lighting map for the secondary uh, we don't need 8,000 uh, I'll just put it back to 6,000 and let's see yeah everything else looks good so let's just give it a render and uh, see what it looks like in comparison to uh, using HDRI image alright guys so the render just finished and uh, so this is using the HDRI image which is kind of like cheating you know it's it's not as fun as setting up your own lighting and now uh, we have uh, the two lights set up here uh, so it's a little bit dark we can always crank it up because I uh, switched back to default settings uh, but I, I feel like you know we're getting a nice um, lighting going on and we're getting nice reflections and so on uh, so let's just do a comparison without the GL at all so if I turn off uh, global illumination and uh, do another render uh, let's just see what happens here okay so let's compare so as you can see guys, uh, this is with the global illumination and this is without 
And uh, the only difference is um, all the shadows get a little bit darker and under the object it gets darker. And the reason is we don't have any bounces going on. Uh, so if you set up your light correctly, uh, you don't technically need uh, global illumination. You can just uh, you know add as many lights and, uh, and the reflections and uh, backdrops and so on and uh, make sure everything is working correctly and when it comes to lighting, you know, three-point lighting, two-point lighting, four-point lighting, whatever you want to use. And uh, in that case, you're going to save uh, render time and you don't need to use global illumination. So as you can see, this one took 54 seconds and this is uh, with the global illumination and this is without. And all I did is add, you know, four lights. And if you go back to using global illumination, as you can see, uh, to get rid of the splatchiness and so on, it took 1 minute 33 seconds with QMC uh, and the secondary cache method. And then if you go back you know, using cache only and crank it up the settings using HDRI image, uh, we're getting a lot of splotchiness and so on. And the scene it looks dark. So if you get a nice HDRI image, you know, it can work in your favor. It just drop in an image on your sky object, uh, turn on global illumination, turn on ambient occlusion, uh, play around with the settings a little bit, and uh, your scene is good to go. If you want to be more in control, you can set up the lighting like I did. Basic three-point lighting here. And uh, this was a quick setup, so obviously you can move the lights around, move them closer, farther away, play around with intensity. I didn't do any of that. And uh, play around with different fall-offs and so on. So you can uh, get a really nice result, and uh, you can save yourself render time or without turning on global illumination. And you can always uh, bring it back to Photoshop and so on. and uh, uh, adjust your lighting and um, adjust your overall image quality. Uh, so when it comes to global illumination, if you want to be lazy, HDR image will most of the time do the job uh, and uh, global illumination will fill up the scene with light, uh, whatever scene you have. And uh, if you want to be more in control, then uh, use your own setup uh, when it comes to lighting. And then turn on global illumination, see what it looks like. Maybe you do need just a little bit to get those little bounces and uh, fill in the shadows. Uh, but if you don't, most of the time, uh, your scene is gonna look fine if you set up your lighting correctly and uh, everything will look good. Uh, so if I go back to my global illumination settings, like I said, you have QMC and cache. QMC is slow, cache is faster, uh, but sometimes gives you uh, splashy results. And for secondary, I would use um, a cache or a lighting map and uh, that most of the time gets the job done. And if you don't want to mess around with these settings at all, you have your little presets here. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So um, you have two options, HDRI imaging and uh, playing around you know, with the uh, illumination, uh, generating GL and so on. Or you can set up your own lighting and uh, so you don't have to rely on global illumination. And uh, also, as you can see, if I go back to my uh, picture viewer, you do save few seconds uh, in this in this case a few seconds on the render time but if you, if you have a lot of stuff going on in your scene obviously it's going to help you so this was 54 seconds with cache and um, and lighting map and we got a little bit slightly darker result without any global illumination and it was 37 seconds and uh, if you go back to HDRI uh, image results we have uh, one image no lights at all and we have 1 minute 33 seconds and no splatchiness if you want to go uh, do the quick route, uh, you know, the cache and lightning map, you do get some splotches and so on. Uh, so anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully this uh, video helped you and uh, uh, maybe you can start using global illumination or not using global illumination. It's up to you. And uh, I, I'll probably make more videos in, um, about lighting and so on in my upcoming videos. Uh, so thank you for watching. Subscribe. Please like this, like this video and uh, I will see you in the next video, guys.